You realize we're all gonna go to college as virgins? They probably have special dorms for people like us. Welcome back in to the Bro 4 Squad podcast. This is our 50th episode. So suck at Vegas, who set the over-under at 49 and a half of how many episodes we would make. And I hope you took the over out there. Welcome in. We are just a bunch of bros drinking beer and talking movies. I'm your host, Jeff Hornacek. Before we dive into the show, let's go around and meet the fellow bros here today. We go first to the all-American hero, Nate Thurmond. Nate, I saw in the local news that you had to be escorted out of a gym this past week for disturbing a session of CrossFit. What happened with that? Well, this asshole wouldn't let me bring my bottle Dos Equis in there. And I really like the pop you get when you pop those bottles off and that can throw the lids at the fatties. So we had a little altercation. Also, you probably didn't fit in since they all had seven different gallon jugs of water and you had that, which is yeah, fine. Uh, yeah. uh. <laughs> and next into the lab to the mad scientist, Brian Banner. Banner, Friday the 13th was last week and you said you, you got me a gift to commemorate the date. What was it? It was actually a 60 foot statue of me drinking coffee. That sounds like something you bought to give to someone else, and then they didn't want it, and now you're trying to re-gift it. That's exactly what it is. As a follow-up gift, did you also get him a statue of 10 minutes later you shitting your brains out? <laughs> no, that's think... just that's just a normal snap every day. Yeah. Very true. All right, guys. If you have not listened to our show before, thanks for checking us out. And if you have, then you know that the first thing we always cover and the most important thing is chess day so as you probably recognized from the title of this episode today we're doing another one of our bro versus bro segments where nate thurman and myself will be the two bros who will be having a debate slash argument about a movie using the five bro four squad criteria and brian banner will judge it so we will now introduce the movies to brian banner who had no idea prior to the show so i will be defending independence day mm. and nate why don't why don't you tell Banner what movie you will be defending? <clears throat> We're going to be defending one of the great action flicks of our lifetime, Armageddon. Wow. Wow. Two juggernauts. So Banner, Banner, do you want to explain to the people what the five criteria are and then maybe for us how you will be awarding your points and if they are for sale? Uh, they are for sale, but uh, you you know I only take money, uh, it's sex or drug money. So if it's legitimately made money, I don't I don't want any part of it. Um, our five criteria, if you've listened to any of our reviews, you should go check those out. But our five criteria are acting cast, story plot, best scene, impacts on pop culture, and rewatchability. So I will be grading these two movies. Uh, no, I'm not going to be grading them. They're grading them. I'm just going to pick the best one, uh, which one I agree with more. Uh, as of right now, just preliminary. Again, I had no idea what movies we were doing prior to this. Preliminary. These are both right even. I can convince myself one way or the other. So I need convincing which one I'm going to go watch tonight. How weird does the word preliminary sound right now? Pre preliminary. Did I say like it wrong? Precipice. No, you said it right. But it's like in Tommy Boy when he says ROAD. Like the more you say it, the weirder it gets. Anyway, Brian. Preliminary? Um, All right. <laughs> All right. We are we're derailing a little early. I mean, or late, depending on if you've ever listened to the show or not. Let's go ahead and get this BVB going. Uh, Nate, the American hero, start us off. Acting cast. Acting cast. I mean, there's no debate on this one. You, you can't get a bigger cast than what they had in Armageddon. You had Bruce Willis, Ben Affleck, Liv Tyler, you guys might think I'm done. I'm not I'm not done. I'm still going. Here we go. Steve Buscemi, Michael Hart Duncan, Rest Owen in peace. Wilson, and maybe save one of the best ones for last, Billy Bob Thornton in there. Um, very star-studded cast. They really threw a lot at this one. Um, it speaks for itself. I really don't have to do too, too much arguing that here. I don't think uh, Hornacek really has a chance in this category. You left out uh, White Coach from Remember the Titans. Ugh, I didn't leave him out. That's his name on IMDb, I think, too. So far, uh, you're behind the eight ball, Nate. Yes, you just are correct. Leaving him out. <laughs> no, that's a rock solid cast. I'm not gonna lie, and I I do want to preface this also. Like, if you're gonna tweet at us, I don't fucking dislike Armageddon. This is just the way that it worked out, and of course, 
we're competitive. I'm going to act like that's the shittiest movie of all time for the next 20 minutes. But you told me you wiped your ass with a sleeve of an Armageddon DVD earlier. Erroneous. Today. Erroneous. And also, I told you that in confidence. Um, you put it so on social media. I have three followers. It's basically. You tweeted at Ben Affleck. Okay. He hasn't responded yet <laughs> as of the time we're recording this. So, He's my acting that. cast. My acting cast is is pretty loaded with uh, guys who, man, we got we got to go back into the time frame, Banner. Right, so it's 1996 when Independence Day came out. So, Will Smith of the three people I'm going to read is actually probably the third biggest name at the time, but that's a stock you wanted to buy in on. Bad Boys, the original he had already done uh, about a year or two prior, which was his first major motion picture, and of course he was on the star. He was the star of the hit show, The Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Then obviously we have Jeff Goldblum, who did this small independent film, Jurassic Park, uh, three years before that. So he's Never obviously, it. yeah, it's, in, if you haven't seen Jurassic Park, go check it out. It might be on streaming service somewhere. Uh, so he's obviously a household name. And then at the time, probably the biggest name in this cast, which is crazy because this man is insane now, was Randy Quaid. He had done Christmas Vacation, both major leagues, and this year Kingpin came out, which is just an iconic comedy movie. So that's the acting cast for Independence Day. So in awarding these points, there's a few things I have to to think about here. First off, it's not just cast. It's also acting. Second off, uh, Jeff, he was just going to pull on my heartstrings by bringing up uh, one of my fa- – actually, let's be honest with myself. one of, Probably my favorite movie ever in Jurassic Park. Uh, but I like the book better. Uh, so there's that. Um so that counts against Jeff Goldblum? It does. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, okay. you, you know you know how my brain operates. That's um, true. No one does. <laughs> I think I'm going to have to go – I'm going to have to go Armageddon on this one. Um, again, mainly because that – you could just keep on going with – star after star after star not to say that those three stars that you you named hornacek weren't good um but you take any of those three against probably number four five and six of armageddon they're still going to lose in a fist fight fair enough true story all right michael clark duncan all right those biceps yeah all right guys let's move on to our next category uh story and plot hornacek let's go to you first on this one what you got so again, for me. I need to preface this with if Independence Day were to come out today, everyone and case in point, Independence Day resurgence, or as I like to call it, because I had to watch it on a plane, Independence Day regurgence because it's that bad. But if this movie were to come out today, we would all just roll our eyes at it because it's so cliche. Mm-hmm. But in 1996, the aliens invading Earth was not something that had been beaten to death. So at this point, Roland Emmerich. The director of it had not vomited up a disaster movie every five years. So this was basically the quintessential alien invasion movie, I would say, for at least a decade until we started to get all the War of the Worlds and um, you know Pacific Rim type movies, which I know isn't an alien invasion, but it's like monsters uh, with CGI coming to Earth. In fact, this movie was so iconic that it was parodied in the same year that it came out by Mars Attacks, assumedly knowing that it would change the genre. So this was basically the first and one of the best alien invasion movies ever made. And I think it was so good that at the time, people didn't even really make fun of the concept. They were like, oh, that's actually kind of cool. Thurman. What's up? Uh, <laughs> Not a whole lot. You tell me. Hello. Doing this? All right. Sorry. I had to take a little sip of wine. Like he was uh, asleep and woke up. So this... In all respects, I, I hate to have to piggyback off Hornacek here because I don't want to give him any points, but I, I have all due respect. Um, this is kind of one of those films that really started off the world-ending films in, in some of the early aughts. Um, and this this also really jump-started Michael Bay. This was his first huge movie, um, and he really hadn't figured out about explosions yet so there were some explosions but there weren't too many yeah. i think it was the right amount um you know i but love it, good it, michael bay explosion and chase you scene. can't you can't beat it you can't beat it um but the story and plot is great there are a few loopholes um but it makes it fun um why didn't they just teach astronauts to drill instead of drillers how to be astronauts 
but that's there's no time god damn no, it there's no time that's there's no time there's, that's michael that's michael bay saying fuck you i'm gonna do this my own way and still create a classic um and w whenever you think about these great directors that gone on to other great things you go back to the original ones and you really reminisce about them you go back to tarantino's reservoir dogs and you're like oh man that's such a great movie one of his originals um and with the story and plot that they did on this one i think you can go back and, and really look at that with michael bay as well so taking both of your uh, answers uh, in this debate into under consideration, in my mind, That's your job. both of these could very easily be true. Very, very easily could we have a giant-ass comet come to Earth uh, or potentially come to Earth, and we've got to send just a normal Joe Blow up there to drill a hole in it, to split it in half so it doesn't hit the Earth. But more, more likely... Very intelligent aliens are going to come to the planet Earth and take over. Uh, <laughs> what? So I have to give this to Independence Day because that is more believable story, in my opinion. See, I disagree, and I'm defending Independence Day, but whatever. <laughs> I'll take the point. It's a fair you assessment. You can't tell me that intelligent yes, I... life is not out there, and it's more likely that they're going to come and take over us than a zombie apocalypse. I can tell you that, but there's actually been asteroids that have like gone into our atmosphere and burnt up. So, but like, not that's so big yeah. that it's gonna knock us into Mars. That's closer than the alien equivalent of hey, that. Like, what? Ask was... the dinosaurs about that. Yeah. Oh wait, well, you can't because it got fucking extinct. Well, I mean, you could you know, like crocodiles and sharks. They're technically from the dinosaur age, but whatever. Moving on. Read that in the book. Best scene. All right. Uh, Nate, let's go to you. Best scene in Armageddon. Uh, this is a no-brainer for me. I mean, there obviously are a lot of great scenes because this movie gives you a lot coming at you. You have scenes where you're laughing, scenes where you're just sitting back and enjoying the action. Um, you even have a musical breakout in the middle of it, for God's sakes. I mean, what more can you ask for? But with all that being said, the best scene has to be Bruce Willis live Tyler at the end when they have that father daughter connection. And if you don't cry at that point in the movie, you are not human and I will then, fight you. Yeah, I'm crying a little you. now just thinking about it. Horn a sec. In less than an hour, aircraft from here will join others from God around the world. <laughs> and you will be launching the largest aerial battle in the history of mankind. And should we win the day, the 4th of July will no longer be known as an American holiday, but as the day when the world declared in one voice, we will not go quietly into the night. We will not vanish without a fight. We are going to live on. We are going to survive. Today we celebrate our Independence Day. Uh, my best scene is when the White House gets blown up earlier in the movie. No, I'm kidding. It's actually I that hate speech. You. It's an iconic speech. It, I want that on a... <laughs> the best part about that is people probably think you were reading that off of your screen. I know you weren't. I hope I wasn't too loud. Into them. I tried to turn away. I think You turned away the... at the perfect moment, yeah, and were... I hate to say that since I'm going against you. No, I, I have to give the point to Hornacek because that was just a flawless rendition of that speech. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Although, again, Thurman, I can't take anything away from you. Uh, that is one of the most iconic, uh, heartfelt scenes ever in movie cinema, in my opinion. So uh, yep. it probably would have be anything other than what Hornacek just did right there. And Nate, like to your point, doesn't that movie make you miss when Bruce Willis gave a shit, like thinking of that scene and how good he was? Oh, yeah. Oh, for sure. Moving right along now, impacts on pop culture. Um, you guys have both kind of alluded to this a little bit in your earlier responses, so I'm excited to hear what we've got here. Uh, Hornacek, you're up first. Impacts so, on pop culture, go. Here I have to kind of invert my uh, acting cast debate because the main thing that I can lean on for this movie is that it really gave us Will Smith as the bankable <laughs> box office star. So in the decade following this, these are some – Obviously, the big movies he did in terms of box office, Men in Black, Enemy of the State, Bagger Vance, Pursuit of Happiness, I Am Legend, Ali. All of that came after Independence Day, which was his biggest and most mainstream movie to date. And as a kid, uh, 
it's this or Men in Black that I think of like as the quintessential Will Smith, cocky, chauvinistic, but you love him. He's basically like a, it was kind of not, I don't want to say our version of Han Solo because I don't think there was that big of a gap. I feel like Han Solo was my version of Han Solo, but I wanted to fucking be Will Smith when I was growing up. And I feel like that a lot of that is because of how cool he is in Independence Day. Thurman. Uh, so as you had said, we, we kind of alluded to some of these, uh, previously on this episode. Um, but the first thing that really jumps out, like I said, is this was one of Michael Bay's original, uh, action thrillers. So this really kicked him off and really put him in the spotlight to do some of the other great movies that he did. Um, but one thing that may not be noticed, but I, I believe it did have a big impact on pop culture, and especially the time that it came out, was uh, kind of a re resurgence of classic rock. So you, you go through and you have this great soundtrack of all these uh, old bands, ZZ Top, Aerosmith, you have John Bon Jovi. There's a ton of good classic rock songs in the, in the, uh, in the soundtrack, and I think that kind of led to a resurgence of it, especially coming off the 90s grunge, grunge phase. So people were really getting into that for the rock scene. And now you're going into this and you have this iconic movie come out with a great soundtrack and a so soundtrack that really stuck with a lot of people and it led to that kind of resurgence. Wasn't that Aerosmith song literally written for this movie? Like Steven Tyler wrote it because Liv Tyler was like, yo, I'm in this movie. Can you write a banger for us? You got it, hun. I have no idea what you just said. Once you said this is the first one of a line of great movies that Michael Bay made, you won the point. So, because we know how many great movies he's made. I really think my second point was better, though. I don't even know what yeah. your second point was. But that brings us to a tie 2 2 going into the final point, which is rewatchability. This is the biggest one for me, guys, because this, this means I'm going to watch this movie tonight. Whether it's uh, Independence Day or Armageddon. Um, Hornacek, you're up first. See, this is a tough one for me because the sequel that came out last year sucks really bad. And I know we're not grading this on that, but like that kind of sticks in your mind. Like the story was continued and it was done really poorly with the poor man's Hemsworth in it. And it did not turn out that well. I actually went back and rewatched this movie like two years ago. <clears throat> and I'm not going to lie, it's a lot cheesier than i remember in a lot of regards i especially love jeff goldblum's co-worker who smokes 11 packs a day who i'm pretty sure his only line in the movie said five times is david <laughs> um <laughs> oh man but the goldblum and will smith chemistry alone i think makes this a rewatchable film and a fun film so if you want to see will smith in his prime like probably beginning of his prime. To me, this is like Jordan in like the 92 Eastern Conference Finals losing to the Pistons. He wasn't at his greatest yet, but you definitely see what Hollywood saw in him. And that alone, I think, gives this movie a pretty strong rewatchability. Thurman, Hornacek is winning this second because you haven't said anything. Oh, shit. What about now? Damn it. It's tied again. Boom. Suck it. Um, I mean, the rewatchability on this and Independence Day are – pretty even in my opinion um, so it's gonna be a tough one to pull out um but if this is a movie that would pop on tnt anytime and if it was a quarter of the way through if there was one minute left in it i'm gonna stop down and watch it um it, it had everything for you um like i said earlier a damn musical breaks out in the middle of it and i'm in the living room dancing sing along with it uh you're laughing during it um obviously you're crying during it because of the heartfelt moment at the very end. Um, it, it has some re relatability to it, so you really get sunk into it as well. Uh, with, with Athlec and, and, Will, and uh, Willis, uh, you have that fight back and forth, and, and we all know we've been there fighting with uh, significant others, parents at one point in time during our life. So there's a lot of relatability to it. And then you got fucking explosions, and you've got Steve Buscemi dry humping a rocket on an asteroid. <laughs> What more do you need? I forgot about that. Yeah. That... <laughs> <laughs> I was leaning towards Independence Day because it is a a little bit of a lighter, more fun movie. But then you bring up him just going to town with the uh, with the power between his legs. I think is what he says, and that just even the gap a lot more. 
Um, again, you guys both made great, compelling points for both of these movies. Uh, I think I'm going to have to go... Ah, I have to go Independence Day mainly ah, because of length. Wow. Armageddon is a long movie. And it is. Independence Day isn't quite as long, and my attention span doesn't quite make it. Um, but fuck, tomorrow I'll probably change my mind. In fact, I already almost re- regret my decision. Stick with Don't it. worry. I'm not, I'm, I can't, I mean, I, I, I got to stick fine. with my guns. So <laughs> I got we you. go Independence Day. Close, close one, guys. 3 2 Independence Day for Hornacek. Wow. Great matchup, what, guys. Take your hats off and shake hands. What a competitor. <clears throat> Tremendous competitor. It's an Tremendous. honor sharing the field of battle with you. Yeah. All right, guys, there you have it. Please tweet at us at bro Squad if you agree or disagree or any of the bro v. bros that you want us to do next. Uh, on to the last part of our show. But first, Brian, I think you had a follow-up question, actually, that you wanted to ask us. Yeah, it's kind of a sixth category, if you will. Mm. And I just want to ask you guys, do your movies... Seven. Do they have a Come again? Huh? I believe what you're referencing is our question and answer segment on the podcast. Do you even lift bra? Bruh. Where we scour the internet and find questions that we want Bruh. to answer regarding. Are you, are you? What is that? Is there a velociraptor in there? Is he caged up? Because the HOA, if they find that, you're fucked. You're not getting. Yeah, you're not getting any money back on that. Lost my <clears throat> deposit. As I was saying, we have dug up these questions from around the internet, so thank you for letting us read them on pod. Our first one comes to us from Dustin Geisler at Dustin underscore the underscore went, which is an awesome Twitter handle. And he asks, uh, next week is the Dark Knight's 10th an- anniversary, but there's a lot of not a lot of buzz behind it. Do you think the momentum of the MCU is overshadowing other great comic book films like the Dark Knight to where there's not a proper commemoration? Banner, what do you think? Hard to believe it's already been 10 years since The Dark Knight came out. Yeah, I was just about to say, first off, I can't believe that it was 10 years ago because I feel like it was just yesterday that I saw it for the fourth time in theaters. Um, I think part of why it... First off, to answer the question, I think it is getting overshadowed by the MCU uh, and even the DCEU to an extent, but I think that's partly because of what The Dark Knight is. People don't look at it like a superhero film because of how that trilogy is. Um, it's not, it's not like what the MCU is doing or even what like Hellboy was back in the day, um, or the Blade series. I guess it's a little bit closer to what the Blade series was, but it's more of a serious movie, not as poppy and really take Batman out of it and just make that a dude. It's not a superhero movie. Um, Very true. And I think that's part of why it does get overshadowed and it's just people are like, oh yeah, it's just a great movie. Yeah, and Dustin, to your question, uh, go the Broforce Squad and the people who listen to us actually do appreciate this film. Thank God. They're very smart people because it actually won our comic movie Madness Tournament, which you can find on YouTube, where we made a bracket of 64 comic book movies, and it pretty much kicked the shit out of all of them. Uh, Nate, I know you are obviously a huge fan of the Heath Ledger performance. What do you think about uh, the 10th anniversary of Dark Knight and giving it a little love? Yeah, uh, I mean, that, that's one that I could go back to to on any given day and rewatch and rewatch over and over again. Um, but I, it, it, it's kind of tough to say if the recent comic book movies are overshadowing. And I think Banner kind of hit it on the head. It's, it's different. It's completely different. Um, I, don't, I don't think people group it in the same category. Um, I don't think they are overshadowing it because of that. Uh, but you go back and think about it like, oh, yeah, that was a superhero hero film. Um, because you could input a guy just like Banner said, and it's still a great movie, great film, great acting. Um, so I don't think it's overshadowing, but it, it, it is kind of interesting how I, you feel the separation because they're so different. It's almost like do it's you, on an island by itself. Yes. Nate, do you still have from college that Dark Knight poster that you had where it's like the Joker writing, drawing the smiley face with blood on the glass and it says, ha? I don't. But the background of my phone right now is Heath Ledger as the Joker. Okay. Well, as Akon would say, still counts. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks for that question, Dustin. And uh, happy 10th anniversary to The Dark Knight. You made it nine and a half years longer than uh, my ex-wife Rachel and mine's marriage. All right. 
Question number two comes to us from Stephen Vo, and he asks, are there any movies you won't see because it involves something you fear? I will never watch scary animal movies except maybe Jaws. I don't care if Snakes on a Plane is a fun, dumb movie. I cannot stand the sight of snakes. Nate, you want to piggyback off of that? Uh, yeah, I hate to take the meatball that was thrown down the middle, but I can relate so much on these snakes on a plane front. I have not seen it. I don't want to see it. Um, there's been times where I've been sitting on my couch scrolling through Instagram and a snake somehow pops up on the screen and I've screamed like a little girl. <laughs> I hate snakes, can't stand them, try and stay away from them. Um, but just to give a little more in-depth answer, um, any realistic horror or scary movies, I don't care – I, I don't mind saying I'm afraid of scary movies. I don't like them because then it gets me thinking I'm sitting at home at night and I'm afraid someone's going to come up behind me and slit my throat. The one that really killed it for me is Strangers. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wait. That one freaks me out. <clears throat> they just do it because they're home, and I don't watch any more films like that. Yeah, I'm the same. I'm not scared of, like, possession movies or, like, like monsters killing you because I – if that happens, you know what? I'll just tip my cap to the ghost, like you win. But an actual person sneaking in my house could definitely happen. So I'm with you on that. Uh, Banner, how about you? So mine just kind of movies that I just won't see. Um, doesn't really have anything to do with like snakes or scary movies. I, I'm not a fan of scary movies, but I do not like watching. Um, like army movies or military movies that are based on true stories, like even like American Sniper and Lone Survivor, movies like that, which are movies based on these people that have done he heroic and awesome things, but they're just so sad. And, and my brother was in the military and uh, luckily nothing bad ever happened to him, but it just, it, it reminds me of what people are doing out there so that we can do what we do here and their sacrifice and it just kind of makes me sad and I, I like to keep things a little bit lighter and more fun um as opposed to having those based on true story uh kind of kind of movies so i don't like watching those kind of movies um but i will watch these motherfucking snakes on these motherfucking plane <laughs> yeah i guess uh i don't know what you're i'm scared more of with snakes on a plane the actual snakes or the plot to that film what plot for for me, one I always think of is the movie, and I think they actually made like a direct to DVD sequel, but Open Water, where the people get like just stuck in the middle of the ocean. That or pretty much anything that involves people drowning as like a part of the plot. Uh, no, I'm out. I just like Nate said, that shit scares me a lot. And even though I'm a competent swimmer, uh, dying like that is not something that I'm looking forward to doing. So out on that. Good question, Stephen. Our last question comes to us from Daniel Siebner at Dan Siebner NYC, and he says, what overused industry fad have you grown most tired of over the last few years? And he gave us four to choose from. Number one, dark and gritty reimagining. Number two, shared universe. Number three, make it rated R. Or number four, convert it to 3D. Banner? Um, so... I don't know. All of these are, I'm kind of over these. One thing though that you didn't list that I'm really over is taking the uh, old cartoon, Disney cartoon, and converting it to a live action movie. It you was, don't like that? It was cool for a while, but they're literally doing it with every fucking movie now. And I mean, why can't we just leave the movies how they were? Or making fucking shitty ass sequels to these these great movies. Like Little Mermaid. Do you know there's like four of those? Or Aladdin. There's like three or four of those. Just don't yeah. do it. I don't know. I uh I guess I see your point, but I, I, I say that and then the second we get a live action Aladdin trailer or a live action Mulan trailer, you and I are both gonna be like, All right, so well, we're getting advanced tickets, yeah, right? Uh, obviously in like six months when that comes out, I'm gonna be eating my words, but as of today, I'm fucking over it. <laughs> Nate, what do you think? Uh yeah, I'm converting it to three D, never been a real big fan. Um I don't like going to the movies and have to put on extra apparati or apparatuses uh i don't know the correct term um Multiple to watch my movie. yeah i'm pretty i'm pretty sure that's right look it up. i think it is too actually yeah uh don't comment below if i'm wrong i don't want to hear that negativity um <laughs> but the tickets are more expensive okay it's a cool theater i don't care i just want to go there i want to see my movie 
I want to actually enjoy the plot soundtrack to anything else in the movie. I don't, I don't need anything else to distract me or entertain me. I can be entertained by a movie by itself. Yeah, I agree with you. I think especially post conversion 3D is just a gimmick for ticket sales because if you didn't oh, shoot it, if you didn't shoot the film in 3D and you decide after the fact, that's like if you bought your girlfriend or your date flowers at like the 7-Eleven across the street from the restaurant. You didn't think of it before, so you didn't fucking care enough to do it. Maybe do it. maybe they just don't have the money to buy real flowers and they can only afford the flowers at 7-Eleven. Well, they could have bought sell- them earlier in the day or something. They sell fake flowers at 7-Eleven. Oh, Way to make us you're... look bad. You, st- I'm making you, you look, look bad. No, we're you're in this boat by yourself. Uh, the one for me that I'm bothered with. So the dark and greedy reimagining, Daniel. That I mean, that's one that I was thinking like, wow, I am fucking sick of that. But I actually couldn't think of an example of it. So if you listen to this and you have a few, tweet them at me because I'm sure there's some really obvious ones that I'm missing. The one for me that we've seen a few examples of. Mainly with comedies, it's making it rated R. Like the most recent example I think of, and I really hope this movie is rated R, was the Baywatch remake. Let me actually check it before I get crucified here. But I think the 21 I don't Jump think it was. It wasn't fucking rated R? I don't think it was. It was. It was. Thank okay. God. Okay. Oh, okay. Wow. Uh, the Not 21 Jump did it pretty well. And the Baywatch one to me, I was like, all right, I think this trope has jumped the shark. Um, and I think a couple of the people have done it with just like basic concepts of films as well. That's just one to me that seems like it's sort of a gratuitous way. Like, hey, we said fucked. Is, do you guys like us now? Did um, it insist upon itself? Exactly. As Nate Thurman drinks a glass of red wine and says <laughs> it insists upon itself. <clears throat> All right. Before we go, any closing thoughts? Brian, anything that you want to leave the people with? Yeah. I might watch Armageddon tonight. All what right. the fuck? <laughs> just, I'm not surprised that you said that. I would watch Armageddon too, I guess. Oh, Nate, how about you? Oh, sorry. What was the question? I forget. Just any closing thoughts, anything you want to leave the listeners with? Um, get your pet spayed and neutered. Thanks, Bob. Yeah. It's Drew now, all right? Show a goddamn respect. God damn it, Brian. He Bob Barker been... dead. Uh, as of this recording, no, but I, it might take me like an hour to get it online. So, uh, <laughs> we have been possibly Bro Four Squad podcast. If you could follow us on Twitter, we'd appreciate it at Bro Four Squad. Subscribe to us on iTunes, Spotify, and YouTube. Bro Four Squad, three words. If you could leave us a five star iTunes review, we'd appreciate it. Check out everything that we're doing on our website over at BroForSquad.com. Thank you guys. We'll catch you next time. Deep in. On a jet. I'm leaving. Don't know if I'll be back. Leave.